In the past, I've done a comparison between StreamYard and OBS. And let's face it, it's not really a fair comparison. They're completely different things. OBS is a broadcast studio that you run from your own system, whereas StreamYard is a broadcast studio that runs through your web browser. But now, there is another browser-based live streaming studio that you can use. It's Restream.io, and today, I'm going to compare Restream.io's broadcast studio to StreamYard, and we're gonna see which one is best for you. So let's get to it. If you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. Restream.io Studio is the new kid on the block in the browser-based live streaming tools. And it has a lot of really cool features and you're probably going to notice that a lot of the features are pretty similar to what StreamYard is already doing. But there are some subtle differences. So in order to help you make a decision as to which one's best for you, I'm going to compare them each feature by feature, and then at the end I'll summarize what are the benefits and detriments to each of these products. So let's start with the ease of signing in and getting your account set up. So let's go to the StreamYard website. We're going to click this link to log in and create an account. You're going to get a code sent to your email that you use to access your account. If you're new, the first thing will be a prompt to add a destination. You can use YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Periscope, Twitch, or even custom RMTPs if you want to go to your own website. We're going to add a destination. We're going to add a Facebook page. So you click Connect with Facebook, and it's going to ask you to give it permissions for all kinds of different stuff and you wanna probably turn it to public so everyone can see the posts that you make, but you can select who you want your posts from StreamYard to be seen by. We're gonna select public. We're gonna click OK. And then it wants to manage your pages. This just gives it permission to actually start a live broadcast on there. And then you have to select which page you want to broadcast to. Now we're all set. Your Facebook page was connected. Well, that was easy. Let's see what it's like in Restream.io. On the web, we're just going to search for Restream.io. Then we're going to go to Login. Here, you're going to put in your email address and your password, and then click Login. So I'm just going to go up here, click Add a Channel. I'm going to go over to the right and click on Periscope by Twitter. And then I'm going to click the Connect Periscope button. I'm going to click Sign In. And it always helps if you get the right password. Now it takes me to Twitter. It shows me that it's going to add Restream.io with full access to my account. All I have to do is authorize that. And what this does is it gives Restream.io the right to broadcast on my Periscope page. So it seems like adding a streaming service to either of these is pretty quick and painless. I'd say it's a wash. They're both about the same. The big difference is in how these features work. With Restream.io, you can stream to multiple platforms at the same time for free. Whereas with StreamYard, you do have to pay for the upgrade in order to stream to multiple platforms at the same time. Let's take a look at how you would set up a broadcast. Let's start with Restream.io. So you just go up to the Update Titles button, click on that. This takes you to a tabbed window where you see Destinations, Titles, and then Social Alerts. We are in the Titles tab. You can put the title and description of your live stream right in here. And if you're doing gaming content, you can just click this little toggle and add the name of the game that you want. For some platforms, this is absolutely necessary. Platforms like Mixer and Twitch will require you to add a game to your platform. You just click the Update All button and it updates every single title. But you can also go over here to the right and click Edit and edit one specifically and individually any way you want. Then all you have to do is click the update button. Well, that was certainly easy. Let's look at StreamYard now. Click create a broadcast button. Select which platform you want to broadcast to. Keep in mind, you can stream to multiple destinations at the same time with StreamYard. Once you select your platforms, you're presented with boxes to fill in the details of your live broadcast. You can also select Schedule for Later, which gives you the opportunity to have StreamYard create the post that people will go to for your live stream. It also means you can share the link on other social media platforms before the broadcast to get the word out. You can also upload a custom thumbnail for your live stream. Click Customize for each destination. This allows us to have different information for each location we are streaming to. So if you wanted your Facebook broadcast to have a different title or privacy settings than your YouTube broadcast, you can do that here. Once you're finished, click the Create Broadcast button. 
Now we created a broadcast and we can see it in the upcoming broadcast menu. So both options for creating a broadcast are pretty simple and straightforward. But I gotta give it to StreamYard on this one. You can schedule a broadcast and add a thumbnail, which I think is kind of important. I don't always like to just put my titles in there and go live. Sometimes I like to pre-plan the things I'm gonna do and schedule them in advance. And StreamYard gives you the opportunity to do that. Now let's enter the broadcast studio, set up our microphones and cameras and all that sort of stuff and see how that goes. We'll start with Restream.io. Over to the right, you're going to click off of streaming software and onto webcam. And this tells us that there's a live studio we can enter. So let's go ahead and enter the live studio. It's going to ask you to add your camera and your microphone here. All you have to do is select which camera and microphone you want and click allow. And there we go. We have my camera in there. That was really quick and easy. Let's see what it's like in StreamYard. You can enter the broadcast studio at any time without actually starting your broadcast. It's perfect for getting your live stream all set up with everything you want before you actually go live. You'll be prompted to access your microphone and camera the first time you set this up. You can enter your display name. My name is Mike. You should see a green bar above microphone moving when you talk. And if you click this little gear here that says cam mic, you can change your camera and your microphone. You use this drop down right here to select the camera that you want. And you can change your camera resolution. Let's bump that up to 720. In the audio tab, we can select different microphones. You can still see this green bar moving when I talk. It's using the default microphone. We wanted to use the one with our camera. We're going to get much higher quality sound from that. You can also test it right here, and it has disable audio processing. If you read this little tip, it gives you information on why you might want to disable this. But basically the bottom line is, if you have a really great mic setup, you can disable the audio processing and do it yourself. Once you have everything the way you want it, you can exit out of this and click enter broadcast studio. In the broadcast studio, you're going to see a black box here. That's what's going to be output to your live broadcast. We don't want a black screen, obviously, so let's click our little image in the lower left-hand corner. I'm part of the broadcast now, so if I go live, the audience would be able to see and hear me. Before we go live, let's talk about some of the features we can use to really enhance the audience's experience. So I have to say it's pretty easy to enter the broadcast studio in both of these pieces of software, but I must say that the extra options that you get in StreamYard are much appreciated. You can physically see your camera and see how it looks. You can physically check to see your microphone is actually working. And I do like the fact that StreamYard has a green screen option that you don't find in Restream.io just yet. So I think we're gonna have to chalk another one up to StreamYard. The broadcasting features that you get over here on the right hand side for Restream.io and StreamYard are pretty similar. You can add lower thirds, you can put the chat on the screen, you can add backgrounds and overlays on each if you upgrade your package. And really there's almost no difference in the way that any of these features work. The one nice thing about StreamYard is it gives you the ability to add folders to these so you can have multiple sets of different banners or overlays or something like that. But that's really the only thing that differentiates all of the features on the right hand side here from one or the other. Both of these applications give you the ability to share your screen. You can share separate monitors. You can also share browser tabs. So they both basically function exactly the same and one is not any easier to use than the other. They're really just a wash. They're totally equal in this aspect. Both of these applications give you the ability to add guests to your live stream. They both work very well and there are subtle differences between the way that each one works. So first we're gonna look at adding a guest in Restream.io. If you go down below your window, you see this little guest plus thing, you just click on that and you copy that link out and what you're going to do is send that link to someone that you want to appear on your live stream. Once your guest signs in, you're gonna notice another scroll bar appear on the right of the screen. If you scroll down a little bit, you will see a camera shot of you and a camera shot of your guest. In order to add your guest to the stream, you just push this little button to the right, and boom, there you are. Both on the screen at the same time. Very nice. 
The buttons to the right of the screen allow you to change the layout. So if you want both people in smaller boxes, you just click this one here. If I click the spotlight button, it will maximize that person's camera. This is really cool. I'm still down in the bottom right hand corner, but Michael T is full screen. I really like that. There you have it for Restream IO. Now let's take a look at adding a guest in StreamYard. To get your invite link, you just click invite right here and you can go and there's a couple of different ways that you can share your link. You can share it through your email or you can just copy it to your clipboard, share it through Google Hangouts, Facebook Messenger, or even text. So I've invited Michael T from Tech Examine to show off this feature. He should be on his way in here now. So as you can see, Michael's entered the broadcast studio right over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add him to our broadcast right now. He can hear me, but I can't hear him. And of course, the audience can't see or hear him either. All I have to do to add him is go ahead and click on him right here. And boom, Michael's on the broadcast. Hello, Hello Michael. How now? are you? I can hear you now. So these buttons here can be used to change the layout. If I click on this one, you can see that both Michael and I are a little bit smaller and it shows off the background, which I think is super cool. Let's say we're having a conversation and Michael has a big point. I can go ahead and click this button right here. It solos him. And I can talk. <laughs> That's right. If I click it again, it unsolos him and we go to the full. So there you can see the subtle differences in adding a guest on each platform. It's not more simple or more difficult in one platform or the other, just slightly different in the way that you're going to add your guest to your live stream and some differences in the layout options that you get. Both work very well. Admittedly, Restream IO's guest option is still kind of in beta, so they're probably building more features into it. But just be aware they both work essentially exactly the same. There's just minor differences. So what's the final verdict? If you're looking to stream for an unlimited amount of time and you want to stream to multiple platforms at the same time for free, then Restream IO is probably your choice. If you want the ability to schedule your live streams and add thumbnails and niceties like that, and you want to also be able to add a green screen as well as features that are just much more fleshed out because it's a more mature product, then StreamYard is probably for you. If you want to see a detailed walkthrough of all the features of StreamYard, you should check this video out right here. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.